everybody. Good crack noon to our friends on the East Coast. I am Todd Obert, President and CEO of Productive Corporation. Joined here alongside me, virtually somewhere in the station, if you can spot him, is Pete Greco, our VP of Sales and Technology. Today we're going to talk about uh, Intercept X. We're going to talk about the product. We're going to talk about what's new. Uh, there has been a ton of kind of buzz around Intercept X as it's a leading product to help uh, stop and prevent ransomware. And uh, apparently, Pete, you chime in if I'm wrong, I think ransomware has gotten some buzz. I, uh, uh, I don't think that's the first time we've uh, used that it. term. Yes. Yeah, I heard um, something about it on the news, Tom. Yep, and it's not Ransom Plus Andre Ware, uh, the former quarterback from uh, University of Houston, it's ransom plus software, <laughs> ransomware. So there you go. Um, hello, Andre Ware, maybe he wants some ransomware. Get his name out there and uh, get a piece of that action. Um, but anyway, back to the topic at hand. What we're going to do today is we will meet productive in one minute. We will talk a little bit about uh, synchronized security, Sophos Central, and uh, Intercept X. And then we will talk about what's new in uh, Intercept X. We'll get through the slides fairly quickly and then get into the demo so you can see what the technology actually uh, looks like. So uh, without further ado, since we only have 30 minutes to do this thing, let's get rolling. So who is Productive Corporation? Well, I'm so glad that you asked. Productive is a security uh, solutions company for mid-sized companies uh, we can help you with uh, everything from specialized knowledge. We can uh, help you uh, answer technical licensing questions so you don't have to navigate the World Wide Web all on your lonesome. We also implement, test, and optimize all the products that we sell. Everything from a security assessment to uh, endpoint implementation, gateway, uh, vulnerability assessments, Active Directory security, configuration assistance and UTM services, we can help you with all of those things. We also produce a lot of third-party content, including the web event that uh, you're on today. Uh, you can find all of it on our YouTube channel or ProductiveCorp.com backslash content. The bottom line is we have a ton of resources to help you, whether it's implementation assessment, knowledge licensing or optimization services, we are here to help. And uh, really, that's why we do what we do. It's why we're presenting today. So, so thank you so much for coming. Uh, if uh, you are not here right at the top of the hour, I am joined today by Mr. Pete Greco, our VP of Sales and Technology. And he's going to talk to us about Intercept X. Uh, Pete has been talking, helping implement, and selling uh, endpoint security, gateway, and all sorts of infrastructure for security for uh, over uh, 15 years and uh, has worked with hundreds of our customers, if not thousands, I'm going to say thousands, uh, to help them improve their security posture. So let's give a warm virtual round of applause for Mr. Pete Greco. Pete? All right. Thanks so much. Thanks, everybody, for hopping on with us today. Really appreciate your time. And uh, I am going to do hopefully my part here to keep it rolling. Let's see if we can get some, there we go, get some technology rolling. So, uh, you know, one of the big things from Sophos is synchronized security. Intercept X and the Sophos Central Endpoint tie into that. Their encryption products tie into that. And then the XG firewall. And basically what this does is it gives you the capability to have all three of these components working together to help improve your security. And the way that it can manifest itself in a protection action, uh, right, is if uh, an endpoint is uh, originating malicious traffic, but the, uh, nothing has happened yet for the endpoint to actually trigger something. So uh, a download has not occurred. Uh, no file manipulation, no exploits have been taken advantage of, just something is sending out a call. And the gateway detects that this traffic is going to a known bad server. It can reach back out to the endpoint and say, 
what application is originating this traffic is bad. The endpoint can go to work on killing that application prior to any kind of an attack happening. It can pull the encryption key if you're taking advantage of the safeguard encryption. It can pull the encryption key so that if any data is at risk, that um, it, data would leave encrypted and the encryption key won't be reinstalled until everything is confirmed, cleaned up, right? And then it can block communication for that endpoint or group of endpoints at the gateway. So effectively, everything related to the infected machine, not the whole environment, just the infected machine, goes into a lockdown and a block mode, um, right? And then you can configure it so that once everything is, is cleaned up, uh, which can happen automatically, the machine regains access to the network and to the environment, to the internet, or for maybe uh, super critical machines or machines that you want to investigate, you can create a policy where uh, the admin needs to go in and, and uh, release that. So then you have time to do a review and figure out well, what went down, what happened, what got touched, uh, how did it how did it come to be, whatever it is that you want to do. And we'll be showing you how the Intercept X will help you do some of that investigation, um, right? And then you release the machine. So a lot of cool stuff, a lot of cool capabilities in the XG firewall uh, uh, that go beyond just uh, basic firewall, right? Intrusion prevention. Uh, packet shaping and bandwidth monitoring, uh, anti-spam, web content filter, application control, which is really talking about controlling traffic, different from how application control works on, on uh, endpoints, uh, right? So a lot of neat stuff there. The safeguard encryption product, a lot of good stuff beyond full disk, uh, which uh, obviously is important for devices leading the network, file and folder, Definitely a good thing to be doing. Um, one of my favorite features, though, application encryption, where you're basically encrypting any of the products of uh, your chosen applications. And so for a lot of us, Office would be that base level. So every time we create uh, a spreadsheet, a Word doc, a PowerPoint, whatever, it's created in an encrypted fashion. And then if I don't end up saving that into the right protected location, the data is still safe. So you still want to control putting the right data in the right spots, but if that doesn't happen, that data is still encrypted. And so if it were to leave the environment, right, it's going to be no good to the to the thief. Um, and so that's really the big selling point of Sophos end-to-end, -end, being able to uh, have these three technologies, raising your security posture, and then have them intelligently communicating with each other so that you can get your security posture you know, to that to that next level. So the reason that everybody came today, I think, was to take a look at the Intercept X and kind of get an understanding of uh, what it does. And then Intercept X 2.0 is uh, coming out. And so we'll talk about some of the new features uh, in that. One of the base level components, and Todd mentioned this ransomware thing uh, earlier, and we were uh, obviously joking uh, about, uh, you know, not, not, uh, not having heard of that. It's everywhere. I, in the I was not joking. So, <laughs> that was new to you. It was totally <laughs> new to me. Like, is it, was it ransomware or, or Rokaware? I, I'm very confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. You know, obviously it's, it's uh, so much in the news that folks who have nothing to do with, uh, with IT or have tech jobs are, are talking about this and nervous about it, concerned about it. Uh, I was at my uh, kid's school. Uh, a couple weeks ago, and uh, a radiologist was asking me about it and uh, wondering, you know, what they needed to do or how would how would he know if their uh, uh, doctor's office was uh, was protected or at risk or or whatever, right? And so this is reaching into all kinds of uh, uh, all kinds of areas. And so one of the base capabilities of Intercept X is CryptoGuard, and the whole idea behind this is going beyond signature protection. That's, that's still important. It's a quick way to identify not just low, low level threats, um, right, or, or basic viruses. That stuff is important to stop as well, um, right? And a lot of the old ransomware is gonna get stopped and blocked by, uh, by a signature, right? Or once a ransomware has been identified, it's gonna get stopped by a signature in a lot of products. But what about some of this new stuff that is uh, getting delivered uh, filelessly or the payload is is uh, getting initiated through some kind of fileless attack, 
um, right? This is where CryptoGuard uh, comes in. So it's monitoring that machine, basically looking for weird things to happen. And this is not just stuff that's getting read or written to disk. Um, right, that's where antivirus comes in. It's looking at things that are getting read or written to disk. This is looking for stuff that is also uh, getting read or written to disk, but also stuff that is getting launched in memory. It's trying to manipulate the registry, um, this kind of stuff, so that it can block it before it occurs. Now, when the onset of a ransomware attack happens, it's possible that a couple of files will get tagged. They give you the capability to roll back those encrypted files, right? And, and uh, for the most part, you're not going to see any malicious activity occur. Uh, this works so fast, but if it does, you're going to be able to roll that back. And one of the keynotes here is that Sophos is using a proprietary rollback methodology. And so um, other folks who have this capability, um, pretty much everybody that I've talked to or have been involved with are leveraging uh, VSS. And the challenge there is the ransomware folks are aware of this capability. And so one of the early parts of the attack now includes disabling BSS and, and deleting those caches so that your rollback is gonna uh, basically be benign. There will be nothing to roll back from. So uh, Sophos has figured out how to inoculate themselves from that kind, of, uh, that kind of attack. And then the final step is getting forensic visibility. And I'll show you this in the root cause analysis when we actually go to the product. Uh, to, to show you how you can see um, where these attacks went, um, what they touched, so that if you want to continue to do some, some uh, further investigation to make sure that everything is clean and good, you'll have a quick guide on how to, to do that. And so basically what that root cause analysis, how that comes to be, is once an attack occurs, right, the Sophos exploit tools are blocking that, then a remediation step comes into play, and that's called Sophos Clean. And what that does is it's going through and remediating any of the uh, effects of that of that ransomware. And then uh, another feature, and this is all kind of happening behind the scenes. Your end users are not triggering anything. You don't have to go to the console or go to an endpoint and launch or or run these things. These are happening automatically. As Clean is going on, then. Sophos Data Recorder is basically going through um, the logs and the events and putting together a picture for you. And it is actually a graphical picture with a lot of data behind it so that you can see what, what went down. And so again, I'll take you through that so you can check that out and see uh, what's going on. And obviously the, you know, the key thing that we're trying to stop with ransomware is this input here, right? Uh, or I'm sorry, this output here. We wanna make sure that uh, we're keeping this stuff non-encrypted or that it's encrypted by us so that we can decrypt it for uh, our our own special use right so uh crypto guard is uh is a part of that the remediation is a part of that the sophos clean is a part of that it's seeking out uh fileless malware so things that are trying to manipulate processes that are already running and block those block the techniques so this is not necessarily a scan tool, that's what your endpoint does. So if you're using Sophos Central Endpoint or the Sophos On-Prem product, that's, that's that scanning technology. This is a technique-based blocking utility is what's going on. So this isn't the next level of antivirus. This is something completely different from antivirus that can enhance your usage of Sophos, but it can also enhance your usage of other AV products to give you kind of this uh, new uh, additional protection. And so some of the things that are coming out here in Intercept X 2.0, uh, right, which if you're an Intercept X customer on maintenance, you're just gonna see this stuff uh, up here. And, and some of it, there isn't anything to turn on or add. This technology is just gonna happen uh, in the background. So there'll really be uh, nothing for you to do. Right, credential theft protection. Um, this is stopping authentication password and hash, hash information. Uh, that is residing in memory from, from getting stolen or residing in the registry from getting stolen, um, right? Once legitimate credentials are, are in the wild, now somebody's got uh, a legitimate access to your network. Once they get there, then we're talking about using some of these other techniques that we're going to talk about next, uh, code caving, which, um, you know, I, when I first heard that term, I had to go do a little research because I'd not heard of it before. I thought this was something that really just 
the highest level uh, uh, hackers would, would be able to take advantage of. But here's a neat little uh, uh, beginner's guide to code caves from uh, 2007, right? And so what I've learned is if you have a job where you reverse engineer stuff, code caving is a, a basic part of your of your day. So tons of folks out there who legitimately reverse engineer things to understand how they work to create add-ons or modifications or or uh, figure out what their competition is up to or why they're so good at stuff, right? And code caving is a part of that. So you take one of these guys who becomes unemployed or feels like he's worth more than what he's making at his at his regular job, and he can start using some of these techniques to to go to the to go to the dark side, right? Uh, I mean, atom he, bombing. It's the same engineering skills. It's just using them for good or evil, right? I mean, <laughs> exactly, exactly, yeah. And, and even if you're not a, a programmer, right? That's that's who knows these. Pretty easy. It took me about two seconds to get to this website, and this wasn't the only. This wasn't the only one that I could find, right? So uh, 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 password stealing. Here's a nice little article on Lifehacker from 2014 with the simple steps to turn a USB drive into a password stealing device. So and, and these guys are trying to do it in who, kind of a white hat way, right? I mean, they're trying to get the knowledge out so you can be secure. But I mean, it's the same technique if you wanted to use it for uh, for evil. We'll say. Well, this, this says filed to evil week. So I don't know. Oh. <laughs> I don't know how white hat well, this this article is here. Yeah, um, and the skull and crossbones <laughs> might give it away. Yeah, yeah. Or or uh, how about uh, you know privilege escalation uh, via sticky keys? Again, um, found this in two seconds. This is from 2012, right? Yeah. And now the way this article talks about it, um, leveraging or attacking sticky keys is really. Uh, come a long way in improvement, but but look at the website, Carnal Ownage, Carnal yeah. Ownage. That's not white hat yeah. uh, right here. Yeah, and, this, no. and this is not on the dark web. I didn't go to yeah. Core to get this. Yeah. Um, I didn't have to already be in the know to figure this out. I did a Google search, and this was the first one I opened. And yeah. again, from from 2012. So a lot of these attacks have been around for a long time, and where they've gotten a lot of publicity, Todd. Is thanks thanks to ransomware is is part of it because that has made the news um, right whether it's uh, WannaCry or Locky or a lot of these things that have have uh, been using some of these advanced techniques to spread and bypass traditional uh, technology. Previously, these were some of these uh, methods were being reserved by um, the uh, the biggest hacking organizations who are using them on uh, our targets and Home Depots and TJ Maxx's and and all of these guys. And now the, I don't even want to say the junior hackers, probably the mid-level organizations now have been able to mimic what these guys are doing and they're creating a lot of widespread attacks. And, and because mm -hmm. these attacks have been so widespread, right, it's making it into the, the, the public uh, conscious of, of being aware of this kind of stuff. But these things mm -hmm. have been going on for a long time. They just haven't been getting detected and exposed the way that they are uh, now. But the challenge, if you don't have a modern technology to stop this stuff, the way that it's getting exposed is after you've already been compromised, um, right? And it's, yes. and it's, uh, it's pretty it's pretty tricky, yeah. And so not the, the time the, to the figure it out. No, <laughs> no, that's that's when you're too late. That's when you're too mm -hmm. late, right? So some of the other stuff in here, and and again, I had to go out and learn uh, about uh, atom bombing, uh, right? Which actually comes from uh, exploiting Windows atom tables. I, you know, I didn't know about that. And so this is basically getting a legit program to execute malicious code. And it's exploiting the, the Windows atom tables, uh, thus the name, and, and uh, APCs, which cannot be seen by AV or next-gen AV. And this is one of the key things that helped WannaCry uh, really spread around uh, so quickly is, is leveraging this and going out undetected in a lot of environments. If you have Intercept X, though, even prior to uh, to 2.0 coming out, they stopped WannaCry right from the right from the get-go with their uh, crypto guard technology. Uh, right, some of the other stuff, uh, new registry protections and improved process lockdown. So some of this stuff includes uh, sticky key protection. And and I showed you already, you know, the the very first article that I found is I was trying to really kind of see how pervasive and how easy it was to take advantage of 
of exploiting sticky keys was from that carnal uh, carnal ownage uh, website, right? And, and this basically <laughs> gives an attacker a shell without needing to authenticate. And if you look at that carnal ownage site, right, the way that they did that is you needed to have direct access to the console. So yep. you would uh, launch this sticky key exploit, then you'd reboot the machine, and, and while you and it kind of depends on on the specific attack, but one of them is is you'd hit the shift key, uh, or maybe it was the alt key. I don't, I don't remember now, but you'd hit it five times while the machine was booting up, and this would give you that that shell uh, uh, access that would now be persistent. So you only had to do that once to get it to take effect, and then you had shell access to this machine, and you could now leave the environment and come in remotely and basically have. Uh, direct access under the OS, very small footprint, so it would make it very difficult for your SIM to, to track it if you're running a SIM. And now you can start using uh, compromised credentials, transfer data, um, you know, and, and, and keep coming back over and over and over again. And so if you're nervous about this uh, having happened to you already, all you need to do to find indicators of compromise is just go through every registry entry on all your machines, right? So super easy uh, to see if you've already had a, had an exploit. A pretty popular attack is launching PowerShell via a compromised browser. You know, once PowerShell is executed, all kinds of fun commands can be issued to do neat things like download encrypted favicon files that can decrypt and launch a small payload that steals hash and non-hash passwords. But now you can actually use that to launch these sticky key attacks, right? So we've gone way past needing to actually be at the console to get some of this stuff uh, going on. Uh, last thing I'll throw out here, um, just because I thought it was interesting, HPA application lockdown. And what this is doing is it's treating any app that's launched from a browser with the same protections the way that Sophos locks down the browser. And this is going to prevent code from being executed in memory or registry modifications through browser hacks. So a lot of great technologies in here to prevent the the attacks, you know, from the from the beginning, um, right? And so the way to get this is by adding Intercept X. If you're already a Sato Central uh, customer, you can uh, get this capability enabled, and you're going to have these additional things, which you'll turn them on in the console, not on the agent. But you'll have these additional capabilities that you can that you can enable, right? If you're using a, a semantic or a Kaspersky or an ESET, then you can add just the intercept X capabilities, which will be just these things over here. You wouldn't have the the regular endpoint antivirus stuff like the real time scanning and the device control and application control and web uh, web content filter and that kind of stuff. So you can add this to enhance an existing. Uh, AV and Intercept X doesn't replace AV. It enhances it with a new kind of protection. I can't emphasize that enough. We have a lot of conversations with folks that that are really trying to to uh, uh, bundle this in or or tie this into the next thing that antivirus is doing. Um, but this is going way beyond uh, antivirus and going into a whole new category. And that's really just a key thing to to know. So let's take a look. So this is what the dashboard looks like when you first log in. Now I'm running a lot of the Sophos tools here. So if you were just running Intercept X, you might only see this endpoint protection, or if you were running the full Sophos Central endpoint suite for workstations and servers, you would see these two things. They also have mobile device management. Encryption is in there. Uh, you can do a secure web gateway, uh, which has a, a neat utility where you can even put that in front of Chromebooks, if we have any uh, schools in the audience here, uh, and you're issuing out Chromebooks, you can get some protection in front of those things. And uh, a nice little phishing uh, testing tool. And uh, have seen a lot of studies about phishing training. And, and uh, the nice thing with uh, something built into Central or just having a tool in general is to use that tool over and over again. Where phishing training falls down is a lot of folks are doing it uh, once a year. Uh, right. Anytime somebody new comes in, they haven't, they, they don't get that trainer and they haven't been trained. Everybody is forgetting about it about month six. And this is the kind of thing that you got to do uh, continuously. And it's not just we do it three times and then everybody's good. You have to continuously be doing it, changing it up so that folks are really getting educated 
uh, on security. And Sophos allows you to automate it. So there's really not a good reason to not do it if you acquire this technology, right? So let's take a look at an endpoint here. And so I have some testing tools uh, already running. I've run the uh, no before ransom. We'll take a look at the results of that. Um, Sophos has made this nice little tester just so you can kind of get an idea of how this tool works. Here we go. And uh, we can just choose whatever it is we want to try and do. And what this is uh, simulating is fileless attacks, right? And so we can choose a, a memory uh, exploit. I like the polymorphic map sled heat spray, mainly because it just rolls off the tongue anytime you see it. And you can you see cannot it think about the title, right? I mean, it just whatever. Yeah, that that's what I'm saying. Thing. That's that's what I'm saying exactly. <laughs> right, and so you can see how quickly this this goes off, and what these things are are simulating. I actually like the uh, uh, oh, here's what I want to show. Uh, my other simulator. I also like the WoW 64 attacks because these are quite numerous. And if you're not familiar with return oriented programming, basically it's just another process or another methodology for being able to inject things into memory and take advantage of processes that are already running. They got scanned by your AV when they launched, but now they're running. So they're not getting scanned because they're not reading or writing from disk. WoW 64 is very common. You're gonna see this on every 64-bit machine that you have. And what this is doing is it's helping 32-bit apps run on that 64-bit machine. And so there's a lot of uh, ROP attacks that are going specifically after WoW 64 because of its, of its prevalence. And you can see we're, we're shutting that down. Uh, quite quite quickly here. Now, from the endpoint, there's really nothing for your end user to do. This is what the agent looks like. With a code, I can log in locally. One of the things that I like about Sophos Central is the tamper protection uh, can be enabled at the global level, but the tamper protection codes are individualized for each individual machine. So if I have a user who's out in the field and I want to unlock this and talk them over the phone of of uh, turning off for protection so we can test something or whatever, I can give them their individualized tamper protection code. They'll enter it in here. That's not going to be good on any other machine. So if they give it to anybody else, it's going to be worthless. And as soon as we're done, I can regenerate a new code so that the code that they now know is also worthless. And we can go back into a, to a lockdown mode. So I really like that. But again, not a ton that the end user can really do here other than view stuff. They can launch a scan. They can see events and this kind of stuff, but they can't actually do any configuration unless I allow them to unlock it. And we're definitely not going down that going down that road. So in my dashboard here, you can see I've got some some uh, alerts up here. I can click on the machine. I can see who the user is on that machine, and I can go in and start uh, figuring out if I need to do a remediation or kind of what's going on uh, there. I've got some machines that are off domain. So this is a test box that I have that. Uh, I throw real threats at. Uh, I don't have it joined to the domain. I manage it from central here, but it's not connected to the network in any way. This is actually my wife's computer uh, that I manage. You can see it's uh, off domain, uh, right? Has never actually even been into the office. I manage it just like I manage all of our other machines. And it looks like she needs a reboot. She's not a fan of turning off her computer ever, uh, but they can't figure out why it runs so slow. I, I don't know, go figure. <laughs> Um, right, so <laughs> let's jump into the endpoint protection. I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> if she, I, can, if she, if she I remember living that YouTube wild lifestyle. <laughs> yeah. I'll be sending yeah, you the so recording link here please, shortly after it's up. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So we talked during the slide deck about the root cause analysis. So I want to jump in here first to make sure that we get a real uh, nice little look at that. So I had run the, the no before uh, test tool earlier. When ransomware actually occurs, right, instantly the exploit uh, prevention featuring the crypto guard is going to go, uh, go to work. After it stops that, then clean is going to go to work. And then the data recorder is going to compile the data. And so when you have uh, an attack that's getting identified by root cause analysis, you're not going to see that instantly. It's going to take um, between uh, 10 and, and potentially as long as 20 minutes for it to actually go through, comb through that system and compile all of this data. But this is what you're going to get after that happens. And I'm going to hop into the visualize and we'll come back to that main page. But this is 
this is the showy part here, and this is just putting together. There we go. And uh, you can really see this nicely when you're looking natively at your at your monitor. I know this is pretty small on the uh, on the go to meeting, but I can zoom in here, and we can kind of see what's going on. The red dot. That's the root cause. This is where it originated from, and you can see this is msiexec.exe, and the beacon is the uh, key part of the attack. Now, as I move these around to get a little better look, I can see that this wrote to this ransom executable and to launcher, and as I click on these, then I can see the other things that got touched. So I can see all the files that have been touched by the infected by the infected items, whether they're processes or registry keys or files. I can find out information on what they are, and then I can drive, drill into the artifacts. And if I want to start remediating or cleaning up or, or getting the system back to its previous uh, state or just verifying that that has happened, then I can come in here and I can start investigating. So once I figure out which registry keys I want to look at, I'll just filter into the registry keys. I can come in here and that's going to pop up and it's going to give me the exact registry key that got created here. Right? And so previously to get this kind of information, you'd have us come in and do an incident response for you. And depending on the level of the attack, and this one is actually good size. Some of them are, are fairly small, but we would have to do the same amount of work, whether this touched tons and tons and tons of stuff or it hardly did anything because we have to come through everything to identify what had been touched. So this is giving me a pretty quick picture. And the thing that I like here is no network connection. So I know this has been contained in the machine, right? So it could take us two days to put this together. And if there was a network connection, then we would go through and start doing the same thing on the next machine. And that wouldn't necessarily take two days because now we would have a framework. So the second machine would be quicker to, to investigate. But if it had a lot of network connections, it could be a really long time to really put together this picture and figure out what else got touched, what data got manipulated. And that's why when you hear about some of these attacks where, you know, they're saying this actually happened to us like Equifax, this actually happened to us six months ago or seven months ago. It wasn't necessarily that they delayed, though there may be some of that going on, but it, it's not quick to figure it out. They didn't see, oh, we lost data. And then in the next hour, they knew every single thing that had happened. It's tons and tons of forensic work that goes into putting this picture together. And now you can get a lot of this stuff done in uh, 20 minutes or less, right? So it's a, a huge, uh, huge benefit uh, to the organization. If you see something that, that really has been contained, there might not be much work for you to do. But if you see that it's touched a lot of other uh, internal or external IPs, you might want to make sure that data hasn't leaked off. And now you're starting to look at logs and, and this kind of stuff. And that's where your SIM can come into play. Uh, to help you get more visibility on all of those other machines as well. So to get this set up, we're going to come into policies here. If you're already a SOFO Central customer, you're basically going to come into your policy. Uh, the first thing you'll do is you'll add your machines to the list that you want for, uh, protected by Intercept X. Then you'll come into your policies, and you'll see that it's already enabled. It's going to upgrade your agent automatically on the endpoint. Your end user won't have to do anything. You're not going to have to do anything. A reboot will be required, but it can just happen through the, the normal course of, uh, of activity, and your end user can, can reboot it. You can force a reboot if you want to, but for most folks, I think their folks are restarting at least nightly when they're going home or shutting down for the evening, um, right? So you can let that happen then. The settings will be on by default, so you're good there, and you're ready to go. If you're a uh, semantic or a McAfee or a trend or somebody who wants to add intercept X, then you'll download the code from the protect devices section. You'll push it out and you'll configure those, configure those options. Pretty straightforward to get it going. These are the things that are going to be added. So if you're just using the AV, you'll have this stuff here and this. If you're just using the intercept X, you'll just have these things. And if you're using the whole bundle, this is what you'll have. Happy to do a deeper dive demo for anybody that, that's interested. Happy to talk more about security. You know, I think our, our main message would be is Intercept X is a, a super easy and quick way to get your posture to the next level, uh, for sure. But uh, if you're worried about, uh, you know, password theft, Intercept X goes a long way, but we should also be talking about two-factor authentication. Uh, we should also be talking about getting visibility in your full network using uh, something like a vulnerability scanner or a SIM 
lots of things to help you put all the pieces to the puzzle together. And we'd love to have those conversations with you. Yeah, um, absolutely. Yeah, Pete, thank you so much for a great presentation. Um, you know, what Pete's proposing is uh, exactly the right thing to do, right? If you're interested in Intercept X, let's have a discussion about your overall security posture, how that fits in, how SIM may or may not fit in, right? Two factor, et cetera. Um, so we can come up with a plan. I mean, uh, security is um, constant, right? Plan, implement, test, refine, and uh, and keep it rolling because uh, things that keep you secure today will only keep you secure if you maintain and reevaluate that security posture. So uh, I know, thank you. We've run a couple of minutes over. Really appreciate your time today. The fact that you spent 30 minutes with us is very much appreciated. Uh, this recording will be uh, going up shortly. But in the meantime, I wish you a fantastic balance of your day and week. And hopefully, we'll talk soon. Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody.